Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and I have to re-record this video. We're gonna talk about Vice. Vice Media has announced that they are shutting their website down. So we actually recorded a video earlier today talking about how the top editor was not sure if Vice was still gonna be in business or not. And it looks like at least the website is, is going away. Uh, this just broke a few minutes ago. I have to give a, a hat tip to, to Black Sage D for making me aware of this. Uh, I literally sat down to edit the other video and then the news broke that vice.com is uh, shutting down completely. And this is right after we did a, a video talking about Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed uh, laying off 16% of its staff, selling off complex. I mean, it's, it's just raining. It's raining. It's pouring. It's uh, journos are are going broke. Uh, you know, it's it's like I mean, I'm sorry for those of you who are losing your jobs, but like none of this stuff was sustainable. These these digital media outlets, none of them were sustainable. It was all fueled by venture capital and speculation. Vice was the poster child for this. I mean, they just kept dipping into venture capital. They were never profitable, as I understand it. And uh, once the venture capital dried up, once the money, the free money ran out, you know, they can't go back to Silicon Valley Bank and get more money. They can't sell to sell the site. Who are they going to sell the site to? Nobody wants it. Nobody wants their failing website. And uh, these journos, uh, their, their salaries came again from venture capital, inflated ad rates, um, a lot of hucksterism, I think, because a lot of these websites to pump up the valuation of their news outlets. They would, you know, buy traffic and, you know, make it look like they were a much bigger deal than they actually were. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. If you're looking for an audio version of Clownfish TV and Clownfish Gaming News, and I'm sure you are, uh, you can go out to Spotify. You can go to iTunes. You can go to Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. There we are. We have more podcasts coming your way. So uh, we are doing that. But this is breaking news. Vice Media has announced its decision to stop publishing on vice.com and has plans to cut hundreds of jobs, according to Raw's Alerts. Again, hat tip to Black Sage D for sending this to me. Uh, this is uh, Anna Merlin. Vice CEO Bruce Dixon announces they'll no longer publish anything on vice.com and employees who are affected, all of us, will be notified early next week. We speculated in the other video, it was me and Geeky doing that one, that this was probably going to happen. They would probably find out next week that they didn't have a job because apparently, and we'll go out to that article, the Hollywood Reporter article, apparently they were asking questions, they were asking their owners questions, management questions, and they weren't uh, answering them directly. They were like, Hey, uh, do we need to worry? You know, we're gonna have a job next week. And they wouldn't answer very basic questions. Do we have a plan? What happens? What happens if, uh, we all get laid off? Is there, you know, are you going to give us warning or yeah, they wouldn't answer, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'm sure, uh, Tim pool, especially is delighted about this. I guess he used to work for vice, but, um, here we go. This is coming from uh, vice CEO, Bruce Dixon. Moving forward, we will look to partner with established media companies to distribute our digital content, including news, on their global platforms as we fully transition to a studio model. As part of this shift, we're no longer going to publish content on Vice.com. Instead, putting more emphasis on our social channels as we accelerate our discussions with partners to take our content to where it will be viewed the most broadly. Good luck with that. Did they have to shut down their, their news? Like nobody wanted Vice News? I don't, good luck with that. Separately, Refinery29 will continue to operate as a standalone diversified digital publishing business, creating engaging social, social first content. As you know, we are in advanced discussions to sell this business and we are continuing with that process. We expect to announce more on that in the coming weeks. Who are you going to sell it to, Bruce? Who are you going to sell it to? I mean, seriously, who is buying used digital media websites. Now it's like a, a used tissue. Everybody knows they're not worth anything. Everybody knows that the advertising landscape is terrible. And everybody knows that the only people that are bankable in this new economy are, are personalities, individual personalities, just, you know, selling the website doesn't really matter. You have to have the people, the people that have the following to, to go with it. And, and vice, I don't, I don't really think they have a lot of people that have a, a following. 
Uh, Tim Pool has a following. <laughs> you know, he's got his own following now. With this strategic shift comes the need to realign our resources and streamline our overall operations advice. Regrettably, this means that we will be reducing our workforce, eliminating several hundred positions. This decision was not made lightly, and I understand the significant impact it will have on those affected. Employees who will be affected will be notified about next steps early next week, consistent with local laws and practices. So apparently they didn't have to give them the Warren Act. I guess the Warren Act where if you lay a bunch of people off, you got to let them know like 60 days out or something. So this is Anna uh, Merlin, who is a senior staff writer at Vice before Jezebel. Well, that one got shut down. Village Voice, Dallas Observer. Uh, author of Republic of Lies. Uh, Anna says, I had a great, great run and I feel fantastic about my work. Thanks for the kind words today for uh, and for everyone who ever spoke to me for a story and put their trust in me as a reporter. Working at Vice has been so interesting and I will certainly look back on it. My email is my first name, dot my last name for job offers, freelance inquiries, and like, I don't know, large sums of money. Names of circuses I can join. I think the ruckus today and the digging by media reporters encouraged a lot more transparency and more quickly um, than the company would have otherwise done. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. This is probably what pushed them into telling people they were done. It was a Hollywood Reporter article. In fact, I think I'll, I'll talk about that now. Let's see what else she has to say. This sucks. Um, good luck. You know, the, the usual. The usual. Uh, yeah, so what we reported on earlier... And then now I have to go back and re-record it, <laughs> but that's okay. This is, I kind of figured this was going to happen. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter reported that Vice, uh, their top editor, didn't know if the website was done or not. He could not get an answer from management. And this was published just a couple hours ago. Uh, Vice News' top editor tells staff he doesn't know if flagship website will shutter after multiple staffers voice concerns. CEO Bruce Dixon told the staff the company is transitioning to a studio model. Uh, we will no longer publish content on Vice. So yeah, they updated this. Um, they updated this because the original story was that they were looking to get a straight answer from Bruce, that he was not giving them a straight answer. And they have updated this story. Um, you know, they said the scramble among staffers to find out they had a job or not, they said, uh, was sparked by a tech update. They basically... They disabled a tool called Google Takeout, which allowed employees to download their Google uh, data in bulk. And because that was disabled, they're like, oh, apparently they don't want us to download a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, and that, that's usually a pretty good indicator that you're gone. I, I worked for a company one time. We were uh, government contractors. And when you were done at that company, like you were done. Like if you were going to fire somebody or somebody was going to quit or whatever the deal was, like they would just like push a button and you were completely locked out of the system. So you better make sure that you had everything you needed. You better make sure that your employees aren't making backups of sensitive documents. And yeah, like when you were laid off or you were, you know, they were like, Hey, you're, you're going to be laid off, but we're going to give you a couple of weeks severance or whatever. You were out the door like a damn criminal immediately. In fact, before you got the phone call, a lot of times they had already locked you out of your email. They had already locked you out of your laptop. You were done. It was like, we can't, you're, you're done. Uh, your liability, we cannot have you accessing uh, sensitive information anymore. So they were smart. I mean, the reporters, right? <laughs> Not that reporters are always smart, but they figured something was up. And a lot of employees, they know something is up, right? Um, yeah. And uh, this guy, this is uh, Visser. Uh, Visser is uh, Josh Visser, who was the top editor at Vice. He said that um, he actually wrote the uh, their boss, uh, was it uh, Bruce Dixon, and asked him point blank, do we need to worry about our jobs? And he did not get back to them. He said he had a plan to restructure the newsroom, and that plan was rejected. He has He does not have a budget for the year. That's it. Look, as someone who's been doing this for a long time, who's worked in various newsrooms and various, I've worked various uh, marketing agencies. I've, I've worked in corporate for most of my career. Um, when you don't get a budget, when you don't have a plan, when they don't have a plan for you or when the company has plans, but you don't seem to be involved or your team is not involved. That's usually not a good sign that you are going to be there long-term, right? Uh, 
and I kind of I use I use the analogy of stone soup. If you guys know the parable of of stone soup, where the guy was buying time uh, with stone soup and then uh, tricking the village into basically giving him all the vegetables to make vegetable soup, he brought the stone, but he was he was buying time and he was you know trying to get uh, get them to give him resources, right? And I kind of look at it that way, like as long as you can kind of uh, pull some information out of your company or get them to commit to longer term plans, you know you have a job when they will not commit to long term plans. Uh, your job could very well be on the chopping block. And with a company like Vice, I mean, they, they declared bankruptcy. They got gobbled up by George Soros, you know, and it's still not enough. They shut down a whole bunch of uh, productions they had. They're, like, they're going to pivot to a studio model. What are they going to produce? Like, I don't think anybody's watching their news, right? I think they shut that down. This explains it, though. Remember, uh, was it last year they did that hit piece on the manga industry and they went to... Uh, a store in Japan and they blurred out a bunch of images and they tried to convince everyone that like every manga out there, every anime out there had lowly stuff in it, underage stuff. And it didn't. And they had this like ominous music trying to convince everyone that like everything coming out of Japan was disgusting and perverted and whatever. And uh, then they had at the end of it, they had about five minutes where they begged for money because they knew this was going to happen. They knew it was going to happen. They're not making money. Um, it said, uh, Vice filed for bankruptcy in May of last year, canceled its flagship show, Vice News Tonight. Yeah, I thought they were a studio. Uh, weeks before they filed for bankruptcy, and they pledged to cut costs and layoffs during the restructuring. Uh, last July, Vice inked a deal to sell itself to a group led by Fortress Investments LLC, Soros Fund Management, and Monroe Capital. It looks pretty apocalyptic out there, Visser told staff. A spokesperson for Vice and Fortress did not respond to multiple requests for comments. And here's Dixon's full memo. Uh, it's basically like, as we navigate the ever-evolving business landscape, blah, 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 headwinds, economic headwinds. Yeah, like, I wouldn't have stayed at Vice. This is funny, though, because this, uh, this, this cartoon is very, very accurate. Is this uh, trigger happy? Yeah. Gawker was going down. Hulk Hogan took it down. Then we saw, yeah, BuzzFeed, Gawker, Lola, the Huffington Post. Now we got Gizmodo, Vice. Oh, my God. <laughs> They're all going out of business. Uh, college Humor went out. I think Kotaku, I think, is going to go out of business before it's all said and done. I think uh, Geo Media, they shut down Jezebel. I think they're probably going to wind up shutting down or selling off some of their sites because this business model is not sustainable. It just isn't. You know, it never was. It was all fake. We had 10, 12 years of literally fake news sites propped up with monopoly money. And that money has run out. And that's all it took. That's all it took for this radical shift in digital media is, is for the money to run out. And, and I'm sorry if you were lied to. I'm sorry if you believed that you had a future in, in this industry. I mean, I looked at it. I'm like, none of the numbers make sense. Where does the money actually come from? I know what the ad rates are. How can you afford to pay a bunch of people $100,000, $150,000 a year to write their hot takes on pop culture and shit? Because it was never real. None of this was real. And now you have to pivot to profit. Now you have to create sustainable businesses. There's no more safety net. And people are going to do it. I think I think individual journalists will do it. I know some people that worked at gaming sites. They've gone and started their own thing. Uh, a lot of people pivoting to podcasting, pivoting to uh, YouTube, to video. And that's that's it. And you can do that with a relatively small team. You know, you don't need to have this massive staff and, you know, pay these people ridiculous sums of money. It's not sustainable. There's, there's not enough of an audience there uh, for it, you know. So everything is going to be upended. And uh, we're going to have a lot of ass mad journalists out there. I expect them to come after people like us, you know, because we're, we're doing the YouTube thing. We're doing the podcast thing. And I think they're going to be very uh, salty. And I think they're going to come after us uh, more so than they have in the past because now they got a lot more free time and they're angry. You know, I get it. They were lied to. You're lied to. You thought that this was sustainable. You thought you went to school for journalism. You were going to have a career in journalism forever and it's over and I'm sorry you know I, I really am because uh, you know it's not everybody's fault it's just it, these companies were, were 
just not not a viable business model. So there we go. There we go, guys. Uh, another one down, I think. Vice apparently going to sell itself or sell parts of itself to the highest bidder. Good luck with that. I think the, uh, the brand itself is tainted at this point. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.